So this portion of the lesson is going to focus on stock, types of stock, the ingredients that are found in stock. Part two is going to focus on how to prepare stock. So when we talk about stock, we are talking about a flavored liquid. This flavored liquid is the base of soups. This is also used to make sauces and to finish certain dishes like braised dishes. When we talk about stock, a good stock is more than just a liquid. It is determined by flavor. And so a good quality stock needs to be very flavorful, but not overpowering. And so the proper balance and the proper technique is critical so that it just melds in your mouth and it's really nice and really savory. There's a new term here that we're going to talk with. I want to teach you called mouthfeel. So mouthfeel is the way that something feels in your mouth. And when you talk about mouthfeel, you want to talk about body. So essentially mouthfeel, I always describe to my students is like the difference between drinking a glass of water and how that feels on your tongue and drinking something like chocolate milk and how that feels on the, on your tongue. So the silkiness, the difference, the, it, the thickness of it is, is something to kind of think about, but a good mouthfeel has, has a good silky feeling in your mouth. A good stock should also be clear. It should not have floaty bits or be cloudy. And we're going to talk in the next lesson about how to prevent that. Improper stock making will make it cloudy and make it have, have nasty bits and will also lack that mouthfeel. So there are two types of stock that we're really going to focus on. And so the first type of stock is white stock. So white stock is made essentially from raw bones and vegetables. And brown stock is made from bones and vegetables that have been browned or caramelized. In the past several lessons, when we worked on the cooking methods unit, we talked a lot about the Maillard reaction and caramelization, and specifically the science of how that develops flavor in food items. And that is true with stock. So when you caramelize or you brown things, you have a different complexity uh, and a different layer of flavor there that's not present if you just simmer and you just cook in water. Dry cooking versus moist cooking. There's also fish stock, uh, which is called fumé. Uh, and then there's court bouillon, uh, which is a stock that is made with more of an acidic liquid, um, like vinegar or wine. Fumé and court bouillon are less common. And so I'm going to focus in this class on white and brown stock making. The most important of ingredients, when you, when you start talking about the ingredients for stock, the most important ingredient in stock is the bones. The bones are where you're going to get the flavor, the color, and that richness. The bones are what give it mouthfeel. When you're dealing with animals, um, you, it, it is better to make stock with younger animals, uh, but older ones uh, are certainly acceptable. When you go to the store, you have the choice when you're buying like chicken or poultry, sometimes in buying a, a roaster, which is a little older versus like a young, a young hen. So this connective tissue and cartilage, that is what melts into gelatin. And that's what adds that richness and body. That's what, what adds that mouthfeel. Neck bones, back bones, shank bones, these make the best stock because they have the most connective tissue uh, that you really want to use. Uh, we're also going to talk about in the next lesson how to prepare bones so that you can uh, remove impurities or create that brown stock. So after bones, which are the most common, uh, and the most common bones to use are from beef, veal, chicken, or fish. Lamb and turkey uh, and like wild game, like a deer uh, or ham, these are less common. They have a, a different flavor to them. Uh, I like lamb a lot, but the, I don't want to say gamey taste or just it, its specific taste maybe would not be as desirable. The seasonings are going to de 
be determined by personal taste uh, and, and the type of stock that you're making. So peppercorns, bay leaves, thyme, and parsley stems. Uh, some, some chefs will add garlic. Not very many actually add salt to the stock. Um, so you really don't really want to add salt to it, but after the fact, if you're going to make soup, then usually I do add, add the salt directly to the soup. So a new term that we're going to be learning here, uh, as far as your vocabulary for this unit, is something called mirepoix. So mirepoix is the basis of many savory flavors. So a mirepoix is just a combination of onions, carrots, and celery. I often describe this to my students if you have ever been a part of making a traditional Thanksgiving meal. So the turkey and the dressing, um, those typically include mirepoix in them. When I am making stock and the, the simmering mirepoix aromatic vegetables uh, that this puts off, or when I'm cooking and doing things, a lot of times students walk into my classroom and they say, it smells like Thanksgiving in here. And, and that's what you're smelling. That's that, that basis there. And you'll find in most good or savory recipes that mirepoix is very common. You can, uh, you can include just uh, the onions and the celery. Sometimes people will put parsnips instead of carrots because they don't really want the color of the uh, of the carrots in there. When I'm making a potato soup, for example, my flavor base, I usually focus a little bit more on the onions and the celery and not the carrots just because of that coloring agent in there with the carrots. Uh, I may put a few in, but not a lot. And so you can kind of balance this out. Every single culture has some version of the mirepoix. Uh, it's called the whole, in Creole cooking, the Holy Trinity. Instead of using carrots, they use bell peppers uh, is really common. And so it just cuisines around the world use some variation of, of mirepoix in it. So the ratio of ingredients uh, when you are making stock uh, is, is kind of outlined here and you have access to this. So if you want to if you want to keep this, I'll put a screenshot of this uh, on your lesson page as well. So for making stock, if you're making, say, chicken stock, it's about eight pounds of bones to about six quarts of water and about one pound of mirepoix. Uh, shellfish or vegetable stock is going to be a little bit different. Um, you can also make stock without using meat and make a vegetable stock, but um, it is less common um, in, in the culinary, culinary realm. Now we do stock preparation for part two.